It is that time of the year many people really don't enjoy. And for many, this is the beginning of spring allergies. That's mm -hmm. correct. Or even amplifying existing allergies. And uh, to help us take back our control of uh, your health and your life is pediatrician Dr. Anissa Vahe. Dr. Anissa, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me Lovely, today. Lovely, beautiful time of year. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Happy springtime. Happy allergies. springtime. I know. And we, and we can say this with a very wry smile because there are people out there suffering. Yes. You know? Thankfully, I don't get it as intensely as others do but I've seen people literally descending it's it's all encompassing at this time of the year and it's debilitating yeah. we've done the count we've looked at our, our cities it's now and we'll get into how we can track pollen count where are the hot spots where are South Africans feeling it most intensely so currently the current trends it's looking like the Greenland Territory so it's okay. looking like Bloemfontein Joburg Pretoria and Cape Town okay so those are the big three hot spots and it's always they're the ones that start off having the big pollen season and then it spreads to the rest of the country and we've got a flower show too to, to Look, go with it, which is great. But wow. I've seen it for myself. It is beautiful, but it will give a lot of people a lot of anxiety yes. because it yeah. is, there's a you lot of pollen. Load up on antihistamines, definitely. That is <laughs> the key. And we are going to be delving into antihistamines a little bit later on as well. But people find out about, obviously, pollen counts in different cities through a resource called The Real Pollen Count. And that's a website called pollencount.co.za. So how does this all exactly work? So the big thing is, is that we can't really predict what's going to happen each year. Every year is completely different with climate change. It's been changing drastically. Uh, Sure, especially yeah. post COVID. So what's happening now is, is that there's a team of biologists that actually have formed the South African Pollen Network. And what they do is they've got each um, a team within each city, they document their daily pollen scores. And what they do is they upload the daily, uh, the weekly trends. And it's quite easy. You can go onto their website. You can actually um, log on to go and get the weekly newsletters. And it's very easily accessible to go and find out what is your trigger and what actually is going to trigger that uh, week in your own city. I think it's such a helpful tool. Brilliant. If you are suffering from allergies to yes. log on and say, like, hey, I need to take action before it gets and out of And it's real hand. time. I like the no, fact that it's being informed yeah. by the tip of the spear. I always use that analogy. But it's, it's those that are working at the front line, yeah. giving that information daily which is great. It's difficult with so many different flus going around. There are so many rhino issues in South Africa right now. How do we know when it's allergies and how do we know when it's a conventional flu or a virus or something like that? What are some of the telltale signs? So essentially what we're looking at is if with seasonal allergies, there's always the chronic congestion, itchy eyes, itchy nose, the post-nasal drip cough, sometimes they're wheezing. If we're looking at the flu, there's generally something that's spread within the family. It's a short-term limited kind of thing, last seven to ten days. You can track days. it, yeah. Um, you can kind of track it. Everyone gets over it very quickly, but it lasts seven, around seven to ten days, and sometimes there's a bit of a fever with it. But the big thing is you've got to go through to the doctor to try and figure out if it is the common cold Either or way, it's the allergy. Either way, get help. Because, yeah. I mean, for some people, it can get so bad that that <laughs> line gets yeah. blurred yes. completely, and you just yeah. don't know, because it does affect your overall well-being and the way you feel, the way you deal. You know, you might actually think that you do have the flu. That's how bad it can get. So practical tips from your side in terms of dealing and managing and reducing symptoms of allergies. I know you mentioned mm. antihistamines. Yes. So the big thing is, is you need to identify what your triggers are. Sure. So the biggest thing is, is what I always suggest to everyone is go to your doctor, get an overall assessment, get your general checkup, try and kind of pick it up before allergy season starts. But also if you're sitting in allergy season, go and find out what your triggers are. Go get testing. We can do skin pricks. We can do blood tests. But that way we can guide you on to what kind of medication to start on and how to manage those flare-ups. Exactly. You want to manage because you don't want to, if you have a, a you know, a, a job that requires yes. a lot of attention. Yeah, <laughs> like a ours. job like ours. <laughs> take, <laughs> take something that's going to make you like drowsy. Drowsy. Yeah. Yeah. drowsy is not the best option. Yeah, there's a lot of new medications that's out there, and I think what a lot of people tend to do is go more onto the older generation of antihistamines that make them groggy, make them very the heavy hitters. Yeah, and especially for the kids, we want them to carry on doing school. We want them to carry on doing their sport. So there's newer generation medications, but also there might be a combination of other things that we might be missing that we might need to actually get on top of. I yeah. wanted to say, because I mean, it is flower season now, and obviously the pollen counts are much higher, but I mean, there's a whole <laughs> lot of other allergies as well. Yeah, it's my kids. Yeah. Come on, yeah. I, I think that's something we can think about now is if this manifests differently in children and how we manage that. This is obviously being your, yeah. your special zone here. We are talking about allergies at the moment. I know a lot of people really caught up in the worst kind of symptoms right now. So if you want to share with us your uh, insights, your hacks, maybe a couple of those gems that you've picked up that help you in your journey with allergies. It is allergy season and we are pushing back. We'll continue our discussion in just a moment. It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, it is allergy season, but we got you covered. We're 
continuing our chat now with pediatrician Dr. Anissa Vahed, talking about how to manage your seasonal allergy symptoms. And we have got an amazing resource to use in pollencount.co.za. So we're going to take another look at that website, which gives us a really clear indication of where the pollen count is, coming from professionals who are working on the front lines, which is great. So it's really up to date. And I like the fact that the colors kind of signify, yeah. yes, what's going on, but possibly what you can do about it. So maybe, Doc, you can walk us through how this pollen count works, i.e. what we should be doing in the varying degrees of yeah. color intensity. So, so what they're essentially doing is they're looking at the different trees, grasses, and pollens that's okay. available in each city. So by us testing what um, triggers you have, we can go into doing the skin pricks, looking at those different trees, pollens, and grasses. And what they do is they trigger it, and they look at seeing whether it goes from green, yellow, or red. So obviously red being super bad, yeah. green being, okay, it's a safe zone. Fine, yeah. But if you know what your specific trigger is, and that's going flagging as red, you already know, listen, we need to get on top of our medication. We need to make sure we put in our voice. Preemptive, preemptive, preemptive. Oh, I love that. So data sharing is saving yes. the world. Yeah. It's yeah. just about sharing the information. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely, absolutely. Bring us back to talking about those allergies, and I want to focus specifically on, on our, our kids. Mm. I think our kids suffer. We just had an yeah. all-fair discussion. Now, my boy kids mm. also suffering quite a lot from allergies. We, sometimes we don't even know what is mm. going on because sometimes it feels like it's, it's almost like year-round. Mm. But we spoke about the fact that, you know, differentiating between allergy and mm. actually being ill. Mm. But there's varying stages and degrees of, <laughs> you know, yeah. allergies. Yes. Um, yeah. How do we know when, when, when is this a, a normal allergy or yeah. when an allergy gets so severe that you actually require mm. medical attention? So the big thing is most allergies are actually quite mild. There's only very few kind of kids that actually do have quite severe reactions. And if we're talking about a severe reaction like anaphylaxis, it normally starts off very mild but progresses extremely quickly, oh, really? fast and dangerous. Yeah. So you can get a trigger within 15, to 15 minutes to an hour. You can actually progress from a mild skin rash to actually having life-threatening breathing okay. and yeah, heart I, involvement. I've got a prawn allergy, well, shellfish allergy, and it's at literally 20 minutes yeah. and exactly. you, you're in yeah. hospital. Yeah. So the big <laughs> thing is, is that what we need to know is what our trigger is. If you don't know and you're not sure, was it a severe, re a severe reaction, was it an allergy, was it uh, possibly an infection that's been lingering for long, that's where we get involved and we can actually go and look through the history, look, look through the triggers, go and say, let's do some testing and let's figure out Build what's the action yeah. plan so that what we do is, is that if you come up with that, uh, if you um, are exposed to that trigger again, you know how to manage it and avoid having those severe reactions. Yeah, and I think just having the, the control, I think just having some semblance of control when it comes to your kids in that space is going to be great for them and great for you as well. Let's be proactive now. So we, we now know what's triggering us. We know we're moving into a hot zone, new season. How do we bolster our defenses? Is there a dietary change that we can make beyond the medication? How do we shore up? that we should avoid. Yeah, for so sure. So food and allergies is always a very touchy topic. And I think you can go on a whole escapade and go for a week away and talk Break about internet, allergy and yeah. foods. But I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. So what we always uh, suggest is speaking to your doctor, speaking to your allergist regarding the foods. But a big thing that we're always promoting is breastfeeding. So breastfeeding um, we, has got a huge allergenic kind of property oh, and that protects our little ones, especially that first six months. We suggest that most of our moms actually breastfeed and they don't avoid any particular food. So a lot of our moms that's concerned about allergies, uh, they do that. Introduce that. that. So we want the them system. to actually expose their children through the breast milk from that perspective. And we want them to breastfeed at least from four to six months. Mm. Most moms can't kind of breastfeed, so that's when we say, don't chop and change the formulas, go to your doctor and decide which formula is the best right, option sure. so we can watch. But also trying to get them onto good weaning foods. So we start from about four to six months, get them onto hyperallergenic food, but then we progress very quickly. So we actually want the kids to be exposed Diversify. to al allergenic foods very early on so that they can actually try and kind of overcome a lot of these concerns of allergies. Mm. What, what's the, the nth degree that we can take these? And I, I say this from a parent's perspective. When you've got young kids, it's either naught or 100. There's yeah. very little middle ground. When does it become dangerous with yeah. allergies? So essentially when we say if it's kind of progressing very long, obviously when we have those anaphylaxis reactions, we say, you know what, yeah, that's a no-go. Sure. So if you've that's had a previous... territory, yeah. Yeah, so if you've had a previous reaction like that, that we, that's when we say, okay, you know what, maybe we do those uh, exposures in hospital or uh, in our doctor's rooms and we watch you from that perspective. But if you find it's progressing and progressing and you're just not managing to get it under control with what we're doing, something needs to be done.
Awesome. Speak to the pros. Don't thank, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. <laughs> And thank you for pollencount.co.za yes. as well. That's what Absolutely. I wanted to say, exactly. If, if you are worried about your own allergies, if you are suffering from allergies, if you want to be a little bit in the know as well, log into that website. It really is helpful. Like we said, it's up-to-date data. It's current as well. Like Graham used at the tip of the spear. Yeah. Yes, I love that analogy. All right. Well, good luck out there. Good luck out there. But we still have a whole show geared towards sorting out and understanding allergies a little bit better.